Hello again, this is Damien, Fiction PC, and today we have a, a entertaining video. I know entertaining it will be, but uh, it's just one pretty much for kicks, and just because it can be done. I happen to have an old Cisco 2800 series, 2801 to be exact, and it's running the 12.4, I believe, um, iOS from Cisco. I just picked it up uh, when I was doing my CCNA. And uh, I still have that around. So let me do this video because I was curious to see if I could get a graphical user interface like the new um, or, or 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 the CCA or whatever they're calling it now of the like the new routers, the, the newer Cisco routers. So after some research and digging, I found um, a way to do it. So um, yeah, let's um, let me start. So first thing we need to do, we're going to, need to log into a Cisco router. And um, mine is at, I already know the IP address for it. So I'll just ping it just to show it. Alright, I had to console in earlier to change that IP address because I changed the IP address on my network and it was on 125 and now it's on 025. But I digress. Anyhow, so now what you want to do is uh, basically you'll want to telnet into it. Right, so to tell now I can make another video on um, enabling Telnet, but I have plenty of videos on enabling Telnet on a uh, Windows PC because it's not enabled by default. You have to go into um, turn on Windows features and you have to go down to Telnet and check the box and apply it and enable it. Um, there's plenty of videos out there about that. I, I do want if all you want, put in the comments below if all you want to actually see that, or you can just search for enabling Telnet on Windows like I did. And that's how I discovered how to do it. All right, so we'll get to the telnet. Simple command. Right now, telnet is not a secure way to go back and forth into routers. Most likely, you want to do SSH, but this is just for demonstration. So we'll just telnet. And now, the telnet, you want to press O for open, and then you put in the IP address. Now you can also put in the port number. 23, but seeing as it's telnet you are in, it automatically adds the port. So now I have to put in my username, password, and now I'm inside the router. Show sure, inside the router, I could just do a show run, and there you go. So you see, I have my service password encryption, just basic uh, housekeeping done here. Enable secret password, encrypt everything. And um, right, so yeah, you have this. You have a crypto. I was trying to crypto something at one point. And username. This is logo login. Right, username privilege fifteen administrator and, and password is encrypted. And this is interface. Yes, yeah, so you can just run through basically. So you see this particular command here. You wanna. This is what enables it. So I'm gonna show you. I'm going to have the lines and all that, my study day and all that. So, all right, so the commands we're going to enter are these commands here. So, the first thing you're going to do, step one says enable it on your router. All right, and use the following Cisco IS commands in the global configuration mode, which is going to Google config now. So, put configure. Uh, normally I just put conf t, but you know, I'm going to be proper here. Right, so now you're going to put it on your router. So this is the command you want to enter. These are the series of commands you want to enter them one by one. Right. Right, so you're going to enter the first one, which is, uh, let me just put this side by side here. Alright, first one is IP HTTP server. Enter that. Then we enter the next one. HTTP secure server. Now what these two do, what these two are actually doing, the HTTP HTTP server is enabling on port 80. And the HTTP 
secure server is the HTTPS. So you have a secure login, which you could, um, you know, 443 if you like, or just the secure HTTPS, that is sure. You know, but um, as we go forward, we will see what happens with that. I mean, this is a very old router. The, the iOS is out of date. I can also tap this and I'll type it out, but I like typing it out sometimes. Right, so um right, so you put in this last one and go exit. Now normally I'll put do WR and do copy run start and there you go. Yep, and there we go. So now it's safe to the router. So now we could basically exit out of this. Right, so I could come out of here. And it's, next step is to use Firefox because I've tried this with other browsers and have failed miserably. Firefox seems to be the only one that works. I guess on a Windows 10 anyway. Um, Firefox seems to be the only one that works. So yeah, let me get Firefox open here. Right, and you just not know, right. Let's go into the browser and just put in the IP address 192.168.0.25. Alright, see, yeah, I've been on it a couple times before. And then, now for this, you have to make sure your Java is up to date and all that because Java is going to scream at you and, and, and tell you all kind of things, and you have to jump through all kinds of hoops just to get to this point right here. So, when this is the same login you're going to use as you're logged in to the router. So, Number is local login you use and so the router login. I'm not going to remember all that. I'm not going to show that. Right, now they'll tell you you are using HTTP Connect, a more secure protocol. You know, Java is very strict with security. To click OK to use HTTPS or cancel to continue with HTTP. Now, if I press OK here, I won't get in because it will say something about the security and all that. and. But let me just say OK, because uh, I think I, I fixed it. All right, so you see, unable to see it, um, to securely file. That's going to guarantee you safety because of that. Hit advance. It's outdated and vulnerable to attack. So, all right, so you will go back. You'll type in the address again. I'm going to stop now. Let's get into that. It's back here again. So you press cancel this time to continue with HTTP. Right, so now we get this. And should access to login again. Local login. Right. See, enter login details to access level 15. Right, so we're going to save the password. Alright, so the SDM has load up. Good, and this basically just gives you um, an overview of the router. You can't really do much in here because of the iOS, because the iOS does not allow you to do pretty much anything. It's so old and outdated. But from here, you can get like a dashboard view of what's happening in the router. You get the model type, how much available memory, the iOS version at 12.4, the SDM version 2.3. You can see these things are very outdated. So, total supported LAN interfaces 2. One is up. Total supported one, two. I have two TS um, T1 cards in there. Don't use them for anything. I just have a whole out there. Maybe I could find a use for it one day. By that time, we'll just make it as a doorstop or something. Um, but funny enough, I'll, I have a funny story with this. It, it rocks solid. Cisco stuff looks like it will work long past I died and gone. It'll still be running, making all this noise it's making right now. Right, so um, yeah, so we have the fastiness zero. You see, we have an IP address with the subnet mask and a description, which I put in via the command line interface. Right, and yeah, it's just an overview here. You see the feature availability, just have IP, nothing else for this iOS. So, when you're going to configure, uh, you could see you could edit, uh, you see, have a little helpful how do I configure this center, yeah, all of that. Well, I'm fine. If you go to interface connections, you could just get some information here. You could edit it if you want. Yeah, I don't want to interfere with anything right now. Now I did do a test connection in DNS field. 
So I'll probably have to look into fixing that, but then it's just a route to have around to play with and test out stuff so I don't get too deep into it. So yeah, this is this is pretty much it here. <laughs> yeah. So let's get some basic information about you know to make access user, tell you which one is what, if you have an upset policy, VPN, outbound policy for QoS, inbound policy, um, and quality of service, it gives you a scenario, you know, it can have a wizard to launch, intrusion prevention, see that unavailable, NAT, you can use basic NAT, or you can use advanced NAT to show you a little, use a key scenario, you know. It's advanced, not look like a DNZ type uh, setting. You know? So we can edit in that configuration here. You know, we can do some stuff, we have routing. We can enable, disable, whichever one, you know. So enable it, you know, do what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. Limited functionality, but you can still do stuff. See the firewall, not there. Right? Firewall policy. So, there you go, original traffic, internal traffic, you could you know, configure firewall, that not there. So you see, you have some things you do, some things you don't. So yeah, that's basically it. You can do the running config. So you can get the, you know, like a show run, but just like of the click of a button. So you don't really have to know too many commands. You just get it done with the graphical identity. So I guess this is when Cisco is, you know, playing around with where we get our graphical user interface instead of that client because you know, it makes ease of administration and all that. Yeah, so yeah, that's just a basic run through of um, the Cisco Router and Secure Device Manager interface, or as I like to call it, the graphical user interface. Same thing. You know, Cisco will have the fancy name for it. All right, so coming out. And that'll close off. And that's really for the close off. And we really have to wait this close off ourselves. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, this has been another video from Fixing PC. Uh, if you like this video, you can always click like. Uh, if you want to see more videos, well, not exactly like this, but better videos, you can subscribe and you'll know exactly when new ones come on. I uh, have other videos in the mix. Uh, just experimenting with this one today. Alright, so thanks for viewing and have a good day.